Hi fellow Webflowers, in this video I'm going to show you how to build this sticky navigation including a custom animation like this. So without further ado, let's start. So here we have our basic setup for a Webflow project and first thing I'm going to do is I'm adding the navbar. Um, I don't like the standard class names Webflow is uh, giving the elements. So the first thing I always do is I replace the standard um, class names. I call this one nav. And I also don't like the uh, container because uh, with the container, uh, with this container element here, you can't do um, flexbox and distribute uh, with space between. It is always uh, centering the stuff like that, so it won't work. Um, that's why we use a div, and um, I call this nav wrapper. And I'm going to move all the elements from the container to this nav wrapper. And we call this one nav brand, and this one nav menu. Those will be the nav links. I copy that class name and also bring it to the other ones. So let's call it nav ham wrap and uh, the icon nav ham. So now we have our uh, standard class naming and now we are going to style it. Uh, first thing I uh, want the nav to be 100% width and also the nav wrapper to be 100% width and the width we are um, we are going to use uh, flexbox we align everything center and justify with space between and uh, yeah we can delete the container give it a max width of 1600 pixels and an em uh, a padding of uh, 3m uh, left and right and in the nav brand uh, we want to place uh, a logo and I'm using an embed field for that and I've prepared a little uh, logo in Figma um, here you can see it it's nothing special um, I right click on it and choose copy as SVG and this you can paste in your embed field and yeah there's some stuff you can get rid of for example the width and height you can get rid of and uh, I don't know what this what this is uh, yeah probably won't be in your logo but we can get rid of it uh, here and the next thing is I want to replace all colors with current color copy that you have another one and here and here okay and uh, now you can set it with here let's try 10 em looks great i can see that the l is still too dark as in color you can see if you choose something obvious like red you can see the, the l uh, still stays black so um we forgot to replace some color here, yeah, it's here. So uh, now we got them all. So let's, uh, yeah, give it a almost black color. And that's the basic setup for the uh, custom navigation we are building. Um, what's missing is we need some, some top and bottom padding at the nav element. So um, let's try 2EM. So 2M looks fine to me and um, yeah, it's it still has the position relative. Uh, if you want to make it uh, sticky, just go to uh, position and change it to sticky, but you will see uh, it's still not working. Uh, what you need to do, you need to uh, give it a value here on the, um, on the top position. Um, 
we give it zero in this case and you can see now I can scroll the um, hero is scrolling but the navigation stays sticky um, there's a little difference between a uh, sticky navigation and a fixed navigation um, you can see um, have a look at the position of the hero the hero starts right there where the navigation ends and if I change the position of the navigation to fixed you can see the hero moves up because now the hero is behind the navigation but um, if you are scrolling if I change the height of the hero to something bigger like 200 um, you can see that I have a max height yeah so now you can see I still can scroll and the navigation also stays at the top always so that is something that uh, positions sticky and fixed have in common um, but you can see the difference if I replace the uh, background color or I, when I make it transparent on a on a fixed element you can see now the background of the hero here maybe this looks great on this kind of design and if you change the position to uh, sticky uh, you can see uh, it now has the background color of the uh, of the body so if I change the color here to something like red or something you can see um, it's the background color of the body you see here so when you want to go with sticky you need to give it uh, the the navigation its own background color um, let's take a dark gray like this that's fine and uh, yeah let's give this also this uh, logo also a, a custom uh, CSS class let's call it nav logo and uh, yes now let's change it to white and also this nav links uh, let's change them also to white okay looks great I can scroll let's get back to the hero uh, give it a max height of 100 and uh, height of 100 VH and a max height of 900 uh, pixel so it looks like before we still can scroll a little bit so that's fine um, yeah that's now the basic setup of uh, navigation we were using here um, and let's make it uh, responsive so in the next step uh, we are going to make uh, this navigation a little bit more responsive so uh, to make it responsive uh, you know you have the media queries up here or the breakpoints how you can also call it and uh, yeah you can switch down here if you want the hamburger icon not already appear on desktop view uh, on, on tablet view you can go to the settings here you just need to um, select the nav bar and now you have this uh, slider here and uh, yeah you can change it uh, to um, mobile phone or whatever um, we keep it on a tablet for now and uh, yeah looks fine for me I'm maybe just decreasing the size of the logo a little bit um, let's make it 60m that's uh, fine for me and uh, yeah you can see here the the padding is too much so let's decrease it to yeah, maybe on half em looks fine and um, yeah let's also decrease this padding to something like on half em okay looks fine for me um, that's the probably the basic setup for let's decrease it here also a little bit let's do like like this and here and half em is already enough here uh, we can delete it here because it's uh, already on half em on uh, landscape mode yeah looks fine so far stickiness is also working cool next step is that we are going to build a drop down so um, a navigation item with a sub menu and if you don't want to add a sub menu to your uh, navigation you can skip on the timeline to the next part of this video but I'm going to build um, a sub menu with a drop down and also build a custom animation to it 
and I will build two animations, one for desktop and uh, one for mobile because um, it needs to look uh, different on both. So let's start uh, with the uh, drop-down navigation. So let's add a drop-down and we are going to move it here to the front. Uh, at first, I'm going to give it a class called nav drop, and I'm going to give it also the color I'm using for the other nav links. Okay, it didn't work here. Uh, so it's that one nav drop text. Let's give this the color and let's rename that class here to nav drop icon. Give it the same color. Um, oops. Change the class name to nav drop toggle and the last one this one it's invisible right now nav uh, drop list okay here we go uh, wait here are some drop down links let's also give them nav uh, links already have that class name okay cool so if we switch to preview mode it uh, should already work uh, you can see I can click on it and uh, it works, but I wanted I wanted a sub menu to look a little bit like uh, this button, so let's style it. And here I have a pro tip for you: if you want to style the sub menu, there are two ways to make it uh, visible in the designer to style it. The first one is um, that you go to the settings of the uh, drop and click show here so now it will show the menu and you can style everything but uh, this comes with a problem if you now switch to the uh, drop list you can see it added this active uh, this this state class of open to it and now you're styling the um, open state of this uh, drop list and if you now would later add an animation uh, to the sub menu you will probably see some flickering um, because it adds the uh, the class of open and then it styles that open and uh, yeah you will see some flickering uh, when the the um, styles are changing so i'm not recommending you uh, doing it this way um, just go on height and yeah sometimes even if you go on height you can see uh, this here and you sometimes you can't click here uh, i would say that's a webflow bug um, just click on a different element and click back again on here and now you see this uh, open state is gone. Uh, so what you rather should do is uh, go to the uh, display settings here and uh, choose block. Now you can see you have it here and now you can style uh, the style the element uh, without any uh, other combo classes. So I want this to look a little bit like uh, the buttons here. So the first thing I do, I give it a white background color and a border radius. Let's see what we've used here, 0 0.6 rem. So let's use the same here. And let's choose overflow hidden. And now let's add a, a border, okay, two pixel. And uh, we also use the box shadow uh, 135 and 3 in distance. Let's apply that. Give it a box shadow of 3 and 0. And yeah, here we go. Now oh, we forgot the border. Here we go. Uh, yeah, now you can see the text is still white. And um, I gave the links and the sub menu the same, uh, the, the same class than this nav items. 
I actually want to keep keep it to have the same class name because um, I want to maybe I want to make some changes on the font size and I want the font sizes if I change them I want to want them to change everywhere uh, consistently uh, without uh, having two parts I need to touch to uh, change the font size so um, what I'm going to do is I um, make some structural changes here I have the nav menu I add a class here nav menu wrap or I can see I gave it a wrong name here I always use wrap instead of wrapper because wrapper is longer um, so nav menu wrap that's fine enough So and now I can uh, now I can give it a text color here and delete it here. Hmm. And it actually it should stay white, but yeah, sometimes stuff doesn't work the way you want. Uh, so yeah, let's go back. We don't need a wrapper, but we can still rename that to wrap. And um, okay, let's just copy that class, or let's give it a combo class. Is or is nav drop. Okay, and now let's give it a here a different color. Let's copy that combo class and apply it to the other ones. So here you go. And uh, yeah, now let's give it a little bit more padding. Let's change it to EM, so it's better um, responding to the screen size. Like this. And like this. And if you want to, you can give it a min width of something like, I don't know, 16 EM maybe, if uh, you want to have it a little bit um, bigger than the standard. And or let's call it, ah, I can't type, let's call it subpage. Another sub page, and this is a or first sub page. Okay, just so you have some text differences, sometimes help uh, when styling elements if you work uh, with some real content. Um, okay, cool. So if you are switching to the preview mode, you can see it's still visible. That's because uh, our drop down element. Our drop list is uh, still a display block. Let's delete it so it disappears. And if you click here, you can see it works. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit stiff. It has no animations at all, no have a state. Um, nothing is really happening. So that's the next uh, thing we're doing now. We are uh, going to style it a little bit more and uh, we give it some um, animations. So at first we make our drop list visible again. For that we choose the drop list here and uh, choose display block. And then I'm going to choose this nav link. And we already have a combo class here. So we are directly talking to the uh, nav links uh, within this uh, drop down element. And we click on this little icon and choose the hover state. You can see now we have this uh, green hover state class here. And we are going to change the uh, font color. Let's choose the um, color picker here and go somewhere here. You can see it turns violet. Maybe that's a little bit, it's not obvious enough. Maybe something like this. Yeah, it looks great. And let's switch back to the state of none and add a transition here. If you want to add transitions, CSS transitions, um, you always need to add them at the non state. 
um, that's a rule how to use uh, Webflow. So let's click on transitions. Uh, you, here you have a big list of transitions. You could choose all properties if you're lazy. If you want to do it the right way, um, choose font color. Yeah, we go with 300 milliseconds and ease, that should be fine. And uh, if you now switch to the preview mode, you can see I can hover over them and they turn violet. That's it. So next up is that we are um, creating an animation when we click on the drop down that uh, yeah this appears a little bit instead of just uh, yeah appearing like that with a finger snip. <clears throat> so for that purpose, let's change the display settings uh, back to uh, none. And now you have to select the nav drop here. That's important. So follow this step. Um, go to the interactions and create a new element trigger. And only if you have selected this nav drop, um, now you have this available drop down opens. Click on it. And uh, we are going to make an animation for desktop only. So uh, deactivate tablet and both phone triggers and um, yeah, start animation. And let's call it nav open or um, nav, nav drop open D for desktop. Now we have a name and let's select the drop list. So the first thing we want to do, we want to switch its state in hide and show. And um, let's switch it to display block. But if I go to preview mode now and I click, you can see it's, uh, it's appearing directly. I don't uh, want that. So something, uh, you have to do some more stuff. So let's work with some opacity. Um, and let's bring the opacity above the hide and show. Um, let's choose zero for the opacity and let's copy that duplicate it and turn it here to 100. And you can already see when I uh, click now, you can see uh, it makes some strange stuff. <laughs> um, so it goes from zero to 100, that's fine. Um, I think we have to do like this. Still doing some strange stuff. Ah, yeah, that's why it has a duration of a 0 0.5. Uh, let's give it a duration of a 0. So if I click now, you can see it appears. It's already half the way I want it to be, yeah, like this, maybe a little bit quicker. Um, go back to opacity. Let's use some out expo. That's a little bit too quick now. So. Let's make 0 0.8 seconds. Yeah, that's cool. And let's also move it a little bit. Uh, so choose move. Add this here. It should start at the, all of these three start at the same time now. So let's move it down by, let's say 1.5 EM. And right click on it, duplicate it and those two should also happen at the same time. Uh, so let's choose 0 EM and give it a 0 0.8 seconds and also out expo. So if you turn on preview mode and I click here, yeah, it takes a little bit long until it happens. It's because here we uh, I forgot to make the duration on zero. Now it works. Cool. Um, you could also select all three of this and set them as initial states. But my experience is that sometimes working with initial states in drop down animations 
doesn't uh, really work, especially as soon as you add some uh, closing animation to it. So I'm not setting it as initial states. I do that on purpose. Um, but if you don't choose them to, if you if you don't select them to be initial states, uh, you have to take sure that all of them have a duration of zero. So okay, looks cool. Maybe a little bit quicker. Two point seven. Yeah. And one more thing I want to add. I want this little uh, icon to turn by 180 degrees. So let's select it. Um, choose rotate. Duration zero. Degrees zero. Let's duplicate it and give it 180 degrees. 0 0.7 and out expo. Yeah, cool, works. So next up is we are going to create the uh, close animation. Uh, for this, you can uh, click on this little icon. Oh no, it's wrong. Uh, on, on this little icon and duplicate it and click here and start an animation and choose the uh, second animation. Let's rename it. Close and yeah. Um, my recommendation for closing animations of drop, down, drop downs and menu elements is always to um, give them a shorter duration uh, than the opening animation because sometimes you maybe have two drop down elements uh, next to each other in a menu and if the user is uh, clicking on the first and then on the second as most of the times uh, both sub menus will overlay and this looks strange so the the old sub menu should close um, quicker than the new one opens and that's why you uh, choose a shorter duration here on the closing element so we can delete all those. Um, hide and show, we want this to happen at the end because if you have it at the beginning, uh, it change it, changes the state to display none and all the opacity and movement, uh, you won't see them anymore because it's already on display none. That's why we put it at the end. Um, a duration actually doesn't matter on hide or show because uh, it's whether show or height. There is no no duration for it. Um, okay, the opacity we turn it to uh, zero, and we do this by zero point four seconds. Um, we move it up. Uh, we move it down again by uh, one point five em. Also by zero point uh, four and. We rotate it back to zero, de zero degrees, <laughs> also by 0 0.4. So um, let's add some easing. Let's try some out expo. Probably should be fine. Let's save it and uh, turn to preview mode. And you can see it's working fine. So that's the desktop animation. And the next part is that we are going to create the mobile menu and we need a uh, different animation for that because um, you can see if I uh, turn to tablet and I click here, you can see it still looks, looks like this. I, anyway, I need to style it. And if I click on the drop down now, it looks like that. Doesn't look pretty, so we need to make, make some CSS changes and uh, we also have to create a a different animation for mobile and tablet. So at first uh, we leave the preview mode and now you can uh, click on the hamburger icon and go to the settings here and this time it's allowed. Uh, you can choose show here to show your um, sub menu or your entire menu in that case. Um, yeah, first of all, I'm going to give this a flex box I want uh, this one to be oriented left. And yeah, sometimes, I don't know why, 
sometimes stuff like that is not working. Give it a width of 100% and uh, still not working. Um, okay, let's try some magic here. Uh, give it a nav menu wrap. Now we can put all of them in here. Come on. Oh, oh. Just and yeah, now give this one 100% width and flexbox vertical. And yeah, I want it to center. <clears throat> Next up is I go to a uh, nav menu and I give it a height of 100% or uh, no, not 100%, 100% uh, viewport height like this. <clears throat> and this nav menu wrap, this one gets 100% height and also 100% width. And yeah, we can center stuff like this actually. Cool. So, yeah, at first, let's change the background color. It's a little bit ugly, that gray, in this context, at least. Um, let's do like this and make it a little bit darker. Okay, cool. And also this one, don't know why this has this ugly background color by default, but let's also choose that color and Next step is that I'm going to increase the font size for that. Something like this looks great. Also here, let's use 2EM. Oops. Like this. And let's give the nav links a little bit more padding. So let's try 1.5EM, each of them. Uh, uh. Looks great. We also have to add this to the nav drop down. So we have consistent spacing uh, like this. And I'm also giving them, giving them all a width of 100%. Uh, let's give them flexbox as well. This. And nav links. Like this. Cool. So if you go to preview mode, uh, you can see it comes in like this. And yeah, if you now click on it, you can see that's the. Uh, that's no, that's no animation, but uh, you can see we have to do something about it. It looks broken. Um, <clears throat> so again, choose your nav uh, drop list here. And remember, don't click on show, uh, click here on display like this. And um, yeah, first of all, I want to get rid of the border radius. I don't like the border ra radius in this context. Uh, let's choose zero here. Uh, we also don't need a, a border here. That's cool. And we don't need a, a absolute positioning because it's the absolute positioning. It is covering the um, the, the, the uh, drop down text. So give it a position of relative. And yeah, now we have to select the drop element and make this display flex. And instead of horizontal, uh, we choose a vertical direction to grow like this. <clears throat> exactly. I just can see right now the spacing is inconsistent. Uh, you can see it has no spacing at the bottom. Um, so 1.5 EM should work like this. Let's see how it looks like when it closes. Nav drop. Now we have too much spacing. 
So let's get rid of this one. So it looks fine, okay, and if I open, okay, the spacing is consistent. Um, instead of here. Um, yeah, we need some padding within the drop list. Let's make it visible again. Here we go. And let's give it some padding. Also 1.5 EM. Like this, cool. And let's change the background color. White doesn't look great here. Um, let's try it with a little bit darker color like this. Sorry, that's not a design class here. It's more about functionality. That's why uh, it's not the greatest design, but I think you get the point. <laughs> um, so, and now, oh, no, that's the wrong one. And the, the um, text, we want to be the white. So like this, okay, cool. So you can see it's already working. But yeah, it looks a little bit stiff. Everything is uh, just um, appearing instantly and jumping around. Uh, doesn't look nice. So let's create a mobile animation for that. So to make the animation, at first you select the nav drop again and create a new trigger because uh, this time we are making a um, animation only for tablet and mobile. So uh, choose drop down opens, deselect, uh, deselect tablet, uh, deselect desktop, and choose start an animation and create a new animation. Let's name it nav open uh, or nav drop open T. And let's select the nav drop list. And at first we need to change its uh, hide and show settings. Um, change it to display block. And the next is that we are changing its size. Uh, we are changing the size from um, height zero with a duration of zero. So that's the start to Height auto with 0 0.8 and um, out expo. So let's see. Yeah, that's working. So that's our start animation, uh, our opening animation. And uh, let's duplicate that and create our closing animation. And let's choose the duplicated animation here. Let's rename it to close. And uh, yeah, we can get rid of that here. And let's turn the size from auto to zero pixels. And let's have that duration. And I think now it's working. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, something to notice in the meanwhile, I've um, made some little changes to the nav drop because um, before I was giving it here 1.5 EM. If you have 1.5 EM here, uh, the animation won't work uh, proper because if you see now uh, it opens and if I close it, you still get this gap here that comes from borders or from paddings. So uh, that's why I deactivated uh, this padding here. If you want to, you can uh, add some custom CSS for that. Uh, you can get this is nav drop and make some first child and last child uh, in the in the custom code with CSS and give it some some uh, some paddings. Yeah. So, but I think uh, we are fine for that. I think it also looks great if you duplicate that nav drop, if you have two drops. Yeah, yeah, 
looks great, cool. Let's delete that one. And yeah, that's the way you make uh, the second animation for uh, the mobile layout. And at the next step, we are adding here some uh, Lottie file. So to find a Lottie file for your hamburger icon, go to lottiefiles.com and search for hamburger icon. And yeah, then you will find a lot of um, icons. You can see how the animation works. Most of them look pretty fast, but you can control the um, speed of the animation later. There's just one tip. You can see this one is much bigger than this one. I wouldn't choose a small one like this because if you um, put this in your to your uh, Webflow website, it will look a uh, tiny. So rather choose one uh, that better fills the canvas um, of the Lottie file. And another tip is if you have an account at Lottie files, you can go here and change the colors of it for example if you if you need um, black instead of white you can select the colors here uh, select the layers here and then uh, change the colors here and then stuff like this will turn white um, i've already downloaded a lottie file so let's get back to the designer I click here on the uh, on the icon and Let's search for Lottie and replace the Lottie sequence. Let's upload it here. Now you can delete the old hamburger icon. I know you can see it's uh, yeah it's pretty huge. Let's uh, switch back to uh, desktop. You can see it's hidden here, so we only need to style it um, on tablet and downwards let's give it a class name like um, nav ham and give it a max width of let's try 3m way too big maybe like this or yeah 1.3 you can see it's Auto playing when I switched uh, to preview mode, and that's why we need a um, animation for it. So let's select the Lottie file and um, go to the animations tab and create a new trigger on mouse click. Uh, yeah, you can use all triggers, but you can deselect desktop if you want to because um, we don't need it on desktop, but it's anyway hidden on desktop, so it doesn't matter. Um, now you can choose Lottie playback and we don't want a delay. Uh, no, sorry, don't choose Lottie playback. Choose start an animation. And let's keep it short. FM open. And here you can choose Lottie. Um, Set initial state and choose zero percentage, then duplicate that one and uh, yeah, let's stay with linear for now. And most of the times it works better if you choose 99% because sometimes at 100% um, the Lottie file or the hamburger icon disappears in some uh, Lottie file examples. I don't know why, but sometimes that happens. So you can try with 100 um, and if you see that it doesn't work, in this case it works, but sometimes it doesn't, uh, try 99. Um, most of the time that's, a, that's the fix for that. Don't know why, but okay, looks fine. Also uh, the duration looks fine and that's the open and on second click we start the animation again duplicate it rename it close and delete that one deselect set as initial state 
0 0.5 is fine, linear is fine, and zero percentage is fine. So let's check it out. Yeah, you can see it works. Maybe we want the closing to be a little bit faster, like this. like it that way. Now something is broken. Nav open, nav close. Okay, cool. Okay, works. This works as well. So let's see how it looks on um, landscape mode. Looks fine as well. And on portrait, it looks fine as well. Okay, cool. So, yeah, um, that's the build of the sticky navigation. Um, I personally, in this design, would prefer a fixed navigation. So that's a little extra I'm going to show you now, how it will look like if it is a fixed navigation. Um, you can change that pretty quick. Just go here and select fixed. You can get rid of this uh, zero here. And uh, yeah, what happens, the hero moves under the navigation and um, the navigation lies on top of the hero. And I'm doing that because now I can go to the background color of the navigation and make it transparent and you can see um, from my point of view this looks much better but I have to do a little change here oops that was a little bit too much you can see it's not centered anymore so I'm selecting the nav flexbox center justify center and now it's fixed yeah um, I think that looks better if you want to go with the fixed version, um, just do this little step. If you want to stay with the sticky version, um, skip the steps. And yeah, the next part is that we are going to animate the navigation bar when the user scrolls down on the page. So the scroll animation, uh, we will make it with a little bit of custom code. It's possible to make a scroll animation like this with um, Webflow interactions, but um, they don't work uh, that proper as um, with uh, some custom code. I tried uh, different variations and um, I like the version with custom code the most. What we want to happen is we want this nav to um, get smaller in height once the user scrolls. So something like this. And at the same time, we want the logo to get smaller. So the user gets more real estate uh, in the viewport um, for the content. And when he scrolls up again, uh, we want the, the logo and the nav bar to reach its initial state. Like this. So um, first of all, I'm going to add a, a section and I Call this one spacing section and I give it a viewport height of 100 width. I'm just doing that so I can scroll here. And again, uh, you can also do exact the same steps uh, with the sticky navigation. It doesn't matter if the navigation is sticky or fixed in this case. I go with the uh, fixed navigation now because I like the uh, gradient behind it. Um, so. First thing is uh, we are going to add a new class. Let's call it nav scrolled. And in this class, we are going to change the padding here to 0 0.5. And you can delete it or let's keep it. Yeah. And we go to the logo and we call, we add another class and we call it logo 
scrolled and we change the size to seven. Seven is fine. Okay, that's it. And now we are going to add a new embed field. And here you can, here I paste the code for you. So basically this here is just something uh, that the code will interact with the uh, Webflow JavaScript. Um, you don't need to make any changes on that. What's important is uh, this here, this if and else. So basically it says, if the window is scrolled more than uh, zero, that means as soon as the user starts to scroll, this will happen. And if it's not scrolled, this will happen. So what we are going to do, we are going to add to the um, ID Navi, we are adding a class, the class nav scrolled. So that's the class we just created. And to the ID logo, we are adding the class logo scrolled. And if it's not scrolled more than zero, we are removing those classes. So that's what's happening here. You can change the ID names, you can change the class names and um, or you just take those ones and then you don't need to make any changes on this custom code. So save it. I give it a name. It's called nav animation or something like that. So I don't want uh, this block to uh, appear here in the designer because um, it's yeah it's over my navigation and uh, yeah I don't want to see it all the time. So what you can do is you can give it position fixed and uh, uh, here uh, full. Um, turn the opacity down, and I'm copying the class name here. Go to my custom CSS. And yeah, I want to add this uh, pointer events none. So I can just make a comma here and uh, add my nav animation class and pointer events none. Um, this makes the, you can click on the item and uh, it doesn't, the browser doesn't react with it. So uh, you can still click a button under it or everything under it. So it's like invisible and not touchable for you. And uh, yeah. That's the way we want. Now you can see, you don't see it anymore, but you can still select it and click on the little icon here uh, to open the custom code. So we already created these classes, nav scrolled and logo scrolled, and uh, but we didn't add the IDs like this. So um, that's what we are going to do next, navi and logo. It's pretty easy. We want this to happen on the nav item. So we go here to the settings tab and we add here the ID Navi and we go to the logo and we add the ID logo. And actually that's it. If you now go to preview mode, you won't see the animation because it's, um, it's custom, it's script and a custom code and script and a custom code doesn't uh, uh, work within the designer. You need to uh, publish it. And when you go to the published page, you can see it works, but it's still, uh, yeah, it, it works instantly as you can see. So we need a little transition for it. So go back to the designer, choose nav and yeah, you can uh, delete the classes because they will be added later. Uh, a little pro tip, I've deleted the classes now. And if I go now to the styles manager and clean up, you can see I can delete those two classes here. If you do that, the classes will be deleted and your custom code won't work anymore because um, it, it maybe will add the classes, but the classes, um, you, you don't change the, the padding and the, the width of the logo anymore. So I recommend to actually uh, create a extra page where you put elements with this uh, classes you are using for JavaScript 
Um, so you don't delete them uh, if you clean up your, your project. Can happen and uh, a lot of stuff can break if you if you do that. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, but we wanted to do a transition. So select the nav element, scroll down to transitions and I'm lazy. This time I choose all properties. I say 300 or let's say, yeah, 300 is fine. Um, let's choose an ease out. Ease out quart should be fine. And we do the same for the logo. We choose a transition. Again, 300. All properties. Ease out quart. And publish. And now you can see it works with a transition. Nice. And you can also do it a little bit more obvious. So for example, if you go to the nav and you add our nav scroll class again, you can change the background color on it if you want to. Um, you can go to backgrounds and just choose again our dark gray. And now you can delete the class again. And if you publish this and refresh your page, when I scroll, you can see it is adding uh, the background color as well. And I think the transition can be a little longer. Let's try 500 and publish it again. Yeah, looks awesome. And I think it's already also working on mobile. Mm, if you want to have different sizings on mobile, that's no problem. So let's go to tablet or let's add your classes again, nav scrolled and logo scrolled go to tablet because now you can see it's a width of 70 m and if I go to um, tablet and delete the logo scrolled class you can see it's 60 m so on tablet actually on scroll the logo gets bigger I, I don't want the logo to get bigger on scroll so uh, we change the width here to 5 m and the padding it's the padding is fine, okay. Here the native padding for the nav element is already 0 0.5 em and on nav scroll is also 0 0.5 em so we make it a little bit scroll smaller here. Okay, actually we can turn it to zero. <laughs> and on, here yeah, it's fine, okay. And the logo, let's check the logo as well. Logo size on landscape is 60M and also 60M. So if we add our class, it will uh, turn 5M. Okay, cool, that's fine. So let's delete the class again and publish it. So now, See, it works on mobile. It works on tablet, small desktops, and on large desktops as well. So that's the way you create a custom custom uh, uh, navigation uh, with a custom drop down. Um, and you can also create a yeah, custom scroll animation for the entire navbar. Um, if you enjoyed that video, uh, give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Um, yeah, see you at the next video. Bye bye.